So what I thought I'd do is take the Cayman out today. It's such a beautiful day out, nice and sunny, 75 degrees. So um, you haven't really seen too much of this car. So I thought I'd just bring it out, show it to you, give you a little bit of a walk around, show the inside and tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it, which isn't a whole lot. So there we go, 2006 Porsche Cayman S. Um, I bought this in 2009 after I sold my 944 Turbo. Had about 19 and a half, 20,000 miles on it. I probably put 25,000 miles on it since then. So this is my daily driver. It didn't come this way, obviously. It came as a stock Cayman S. Um, pretty much all the extra goodies you see on the outside, I did myself. So after I got it, I painted the uh, stock lobster rims black and put the red stripes on them. Put the Cayman S decals on the side. Uh, painted the black, uh, the air intakes black, uh, painted the mirrors black, uh, put the clear side markers in, put the uh, black trim around the headlights. I swapped out the stock fog lights with these LED lights. Um, I did have some front black splitters on the left and right that looked really nice. Um, but they fell off. They fell off on the highway and I ran over them. So it's kind of a problem. I don't recommend doing that. Uh, around the back, the uh, spoiler. It's got like a GT style spoiler. Uh, pulled the stock one off, put that one on. Had the uh, edge of it painted guards red. And I had the front spoilers painted black with a uh, red stripe on the very front of them too so everything matched and it looked really good uh, I wish I could go back to this the uh, front splitters again um, put a uh, Remus exhaust on it probably a couple years after I had it that sounds great uh, I might give you a little quick demo of that but overall I'll also put in the uh, clear red or the uh, red uh, tech equipment taillights and most of the stuff I pulled off, I still have the original stuff. I painted the little uh, plastic surround of the uh, exhaust that was like silver. Painted that black. Um, obviously put the uh, front little windshield Porsche banner on there. That pretty much covers it on the outside. It's just a great car. If you're ever thinking about buying a Cayman and you're kind of on the fence about it, uh, you shouldn't be because this is the best car I've ever owned by far. And I've, I've owned some a lot of cars and I've owned some nice ones, but this is just the most pleasurable, entertaining car I've ever had. It just does everything you want it to. It's you know it's got enough power where you can. You can have fun every day and never feel like the car is getting away from you. Um, and after you drive one of these, and it, may, it might be the same for the Boxster, but I'm not really a convertible person, but once you drive one of these cars and you get used to mid-engine, you get in and it's like, this is all the car I could ever possibly need and have the time of my life in. I mean, I, I, I don't need the 930. I don't need the M3. If I just had this car and this was it, and this was the only thing I drove, I would be one lucky guy, one happy camper. It's just, it does everything you want it to. Yeah, it's not nearly as fast as like a 911 or obviously a new turbo or anything like that. It's not supposed to be. Um, but it doesn't need to be either, and that's the thing. It's just so fun to drive. It's so easy to drive. You know, you can get nine tenths out of this car without being a uh, professional race driver. And yet, it, it lets you know when you're getting to the limit so you don't go over it. Whereas like in the 930, there's a fine line between running hard and, and taking it past the limit where the car's, you know, it's got, you're kind of out qualifying yourself in terms of being able to drive it properly. You don't really run into that with the Cayman. Let's take a look at the inside. So 
So this is Savannah Beige interior. It came with a full leather interior, which means you get leather on the doors and on the dash and everything. The uh, red stuff you see on the inside on the doors, um, I added that later. I swapped the original pieces out, which were beige as well, and uh, sent these to bumper plugs. And uh, they painted them for me. Same with the uh, uh, rear center console, which I don't really know why they call it rear, but it's mostly center. But uh, that was painted red as well. Um, this, I mean, this is my daily driver, and yet it's pretty clean. It's not, it's not concourse shape right now. It's a few weeks away from that. Um, but I mean, it's just so comfortable. It's got everything you could possibly need: heated seats. Um, you know, power steering, unlike the 930, I mean, you don't realize how much you miss power steering until you don't have it anymore. Um, this has sport chrono package, came with the, uh, stainless steel illuminated door sills. Those look really cool. And they light up at night. They're on right now, but you can't see them. Uh, the, uh, aluminum shifter brake handle. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, I did put in the aftermarket. Aftermarket Kenwood navigation unit. And it pretty much does everything possible you would want it to. Pandora, I you know, iPod. The uh, GPS or the uh, navigation is Garmin based, so. It works really well, and then of course you can get the company makes these surrounds that fit it perfectly, so that's nice. Uh, I did put the um, short shift kit from the uh, 911 GT3 in here, and that makes a huge difference. The throws are only about 25 30 percent shorter, but it's really where um, the throws should have been from the very beginning, so that was a worthwhile add. But overall, it's just a great car. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. I mean, if you're, like I said, if, if you're wondering whether one of these cars is for you and you think like you're you're, uh, you're going to take a step down and not get in a 911, don't have any reservations about it whatsoever. Um, you could have this car and not even miss a 911. In fact, I don't. I mean, I when I got this car, I thought, okay, you know, it's going to be kind of like my 930. It'll be like a... You know, I'll drive it just occasionally and stuff and try to keep it clean. But it's just so fun to drive. I drive it all the time. I drive it every day, really, unless it's just really bad weather. And I find myself not driving the 930 nearly as much as I used to. Uh, I used to put probably two or 3,000 miles on that car every year. Now it's down to like 800 miles. And part of it is it's just, you know, the difference between a car that was basically engineered in the 70s and this car which is, you know, mid-2000s, and it's like going from, you know, dinosaurs to, you know, the latest and greatest. It's just such a huge difference. It's just so much more comfortable to drive. Um, I mean, it's more rewarding in a lot of ways. I mean, the other, you know, nothing's ever going to beat the, you know, the prestige and provenance and looks of a 930. I get that, and that's one of the reasons I love it. It's so quirky, and it's, you know, it makes a lot of noises, and it's a six-cylinder... Uh, of course, this is too, but this is mid-engine base, but, you know, that's rear engine, six-cylinder. And it's got all the the uh, traits that a 911 has always had, which is great. But um, this is just, this is a better car to have. If you want to drive a car often, like daily or semi-daily, you're going to be much better off buying something far newer like this than an older 911, in my opinion. But that's not to say you can't drive an older 911, but I, I'm not sure I would recommend a 930. I'd probably send it towards like a 3.2 Carrera or an SC or something like that. Uh, but in any case, there you go. Uh, Porsche Cayman S. Let's uh, start it up and see what it sounds like. 